My name is Dana Robbins and I'm a graduate student at Olivet Nazarene University in Nursing Informatics. And today my video presentation is on project management and how it relates to simulation-based orientation. Project management is the discipline of planning, organizing, and managing resources in order to achieve successful project outcomes and goals. It's important for a project manager to possess certain roles and responsibilities, and those include being a strong manager, an organizer and planner, someone that's good at team building, and a, a very excellent communicator. Those all translate to successful implementations of projects. When looking at simulation-based orientation, it is a program that embraces technology and highlights experiential learning. It helps to create a learner environment that is safe and enhances critical thinking and clinical skills. Those skills in a simulation environment translate into the clinical practice environment with the overall goal of nurses being able to provide high quality care with best patient outcomes. In looking at any projects, it's important to consider all of these key steps. The first is looking at the scope. With this project within scope, were RNs that practice at the bedside. Outside of scope were considered anyone that is clinical or non-clinical, including nursing techs or respiratory therapists or physical therapy, other disciplines such as that. Another key important thing is to look at stakeholders. Stakeholders are those who have an invested interest in the project. Key stakeholders for this project included chief nurse executives, nursing managers, nursing directors, nursing educators, nurses from informatics, preceptors or clinical coaches, and other staff members. It's important to communicate timeframes and timelines to those key stakeholders. Timelines help to keep a project on track and under budget. Timelines for this project include training dates, pilot dates, and go live dates. Tra training dates are for nursing educators and for the preceptors and coaches. These training dates would occur in June, July, and August with a pilot of September and a go-live date of October 20th. The pilots are important in order to identify any issues up front that need to be addressed before the go-live date. Next, we want to consider financial considerations. With a simulation-based learning, we want to consider the cost of supplies, the cost of any type of simulation equipment if not already purchased, and also look at the length of time new hires would spend in orientation and calculating their salaries. All of those costs can be offset and justified if we look at um, retention rates. Do we have an improved retention rate of our new hire nurses? And also looking at patient outcomes. Um, do we provide high quality care and have decreased patient um, medication errors, for instance, or other such patient safety events? Um, next, we want to look at team development and communication. It's important that all of the members and key stakeholders are involved and kept um, with open communication throughout the process so that um, they feel that a sense of empowerment and an ability to voice any concerns that they might have throughout the process. Um, also with team development and communication, it's important that they are involved as it will increase buy-in for the project and help with integration of the new hire into the unit and the organization as a whole. Looking at risks, the biggest risk with this type of a project is that it may be very costly, um, both in time and money, and it's important that we have the quality and return of investment um, calculated into, into the um, picture. Uh, return of investment and quality, we would want to look at um, have the new hires, do they feel that this is a value-added experience? Do they feel that the transition to the unit is easier? And do they feel confident and ready to take care of patients with this type of process of using simulation-based learning? Also looking at, on the unit, do we have competencies in place that validate their skill set? And return of investment, can it also include looking at length of orientation? Has it been shortened? and also looking at um, retention rates. We want to look down the road in six months, a year, even two years out. Have our, has our retention rate increased and have the costs that are associated with turnover decreased? By looking at all of this, 
um, we can have a successful program when we know that our nurses are providing highly qualified care that's safe and compassionate and results in our best outcomes for patients. Thank you.